Euclid's first common notion is this. Things which are equal to the same thing are equal to each other. That's a rule of mathematical reasoning. It's true because it works. Has done and always will do. In his book, hmm, Euclid says this is self-evident. You see, there it is, even in that 2,000-year-old book of mechanical law, it is a self-evident truth that things which are equal to the same thing are equal to each other. Hi, I'm Dave Bjerkren, Managing Editor of the News of Delaware County. And I'm Arthur Ryan, Special Correspondent to the News. And this is our review of Lincoln, which opened up in movie theaters nationwide this past weekend. And it was directed by Steven Spielberg, who's no stranger to uh, historical dramas, of course. He directed Saving Private Ryan and Schindler's List. Uh, but this film is different in that it's a much more intimate look at um, a historical subject. You know, not as many sweeping, you know, camera movements and vistas and uh, large, loud, bombastic scores. Uh, more of a film like Sidney Lumet and less of a John Ford epic. And I have to say, it ex exceeded my expectations on all levels. I was just fully taken with it, and, and I think it's one of the best films of the year. Yeah, I think as, as political drama, I think it, it totally works. Uh, it's not going to be for everybody. This is not an action-adventure film. Um, but if you want an intimate look at, um, at Lincoln's second term, at, at the... Uh, the battle that took place to try and bring the 13th Amendment uh, to, to pass it. Thank you, to yes. Passage, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, like they show in the film is, is Lincoln had um, freed the slaves, so to speak, with the Emancipation Proclamation, but that was during the war. It was really just an executive order. Right. Now, as the film a... starts, the war is coming to an end, and he knows he has to cement it in the law uh, to make it happen. And like today and how messy politics can be today it was just as messy back then right, uh, right. a lot of the horse trading that went on back then yeah he basically had to use his will the, the his the personality to convince several congressmen who were very hesitant right. to pass this thing and what so, i thought was interesting is how he sort of um, employs uh, they don't call them lobbyists back then, but they, they're certainly doing the same things that lobbyists do today. Maybe not with money, right. uh, but by offering you know positions in the uh, new administration, mm -hmm. if they were to change their votes to vote yes for uh, the amendment. Right, um, right. I think the, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna you know you know I I was wondering what you thought of Daniel Day Lewis's performance as Lincoln oh, because. Um, you know, he's been filmed and written about so much. Yeah, that's a very good point, the fact that Lincoln has been portrayed uh, so many times in the past, even by, um, uh, uh, now the name uh, escapes me, he was in the movie. Um, <laughs> I forget uh, well, his name. Um, Hal Holbrook. Hal Holbrook, thank you. <laughs> Hal Holbrook played Lincoln in the 70s, and here he is in this movie playing Blair, um, right, right. the sort of uh, founder of the Republican Party at that time. Uh, so yes, uh, I think that uh, Lewis's performances is one for the ages. I mean, to me, it's right up there with Cagney's George M. Cohan and Brendo's Vito Corleone. I mean, it's one of those performances that years from now, when people are talking about Abraham Lincoln, they're going to be seeing Daniel be looking Lewis. At it. And that's one of the things that I liked is I felt like this was a, there's no way we could really know what the real Lincoln was like. This felt, though, as if I was seeing the real Lincoln, Lincoln yeah. um, and then watching, you know, you know, walking in his, in his footsteps, steps, basically. Yeah. Um, a very gentle performance mm -hmm. overall. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got the, the humor and the, the folksy style right. that people have come to expect from Lincoln, but he's also got the political savvy. Sure. Yeah. And, and, the pa and the passion at times, to really, to the few times to get angry and to make things happen when it counts. Right, you know? right, right. Yeah, because, you know, and, and it doesn't fully make him look like he's a total hero. Right. Um, there are... You know, they do talk about the fact that he suspended a lot of constitutional right. during the provisions during the war to achieve his, right. his, his goals. In so, essence, you know. that's why he's going through all of this at the last minute to firm up, uh, you know, the, the ending of slavery by law and not a, a written, you know, uh, emancipation, which he did because he knows that they can challenge that 
once the South is brought back into the Union following the war. Right. Uh, right also yeah. on the performances, uh, actually I thought the entire cast for me uh, was was tremendous, especially you know Sally Field as mm -hmm. Mary Todd Lincoln is, is brilliant. There's been some talk about her age difference with Daniel Day Lewis. To me, I didn't think it. it I don't think it mattered at all. No, it really. Okay. No, what I liked was you you know the the historical idea of uh, Mrs. Lincoln is that she was this crazy depressed right. woman and right. just made Lincoln's life miserable. There's elements of that in this, but they sort of explain she, why she may have been a little crazy and was depressed. And, you know, the death of the son. You know, and you also see like a strong. Yes, a strong like, woman who yeah. who is politically savvy, and you know, she, it's it's not like she's just you know, a milk toast. Right, this, exactly. So, you know. The other um, wonderful performance, of course, is uh, uh, Tommy Lee yeah, Jones yeah. as Thaddeus Stevens, right. who was a Pennsylvanian um, Republican who was um, the head of the Republican Party in the House of Representatives, an ardent abolitionist who uh, really wanted to uh, bring about the end of slavery, but he wanted to do it for more moral. Uh, reasons, right? You know, right. this moral idea of a moral compass that is just, you know, naturally wrong uh, to hold a men in bondage. Whereas Lincoln is is looking at it as, in the eyes of the law, just to get the amendment passed uh, mm -hmm. and to appease certain members of Congress to vote for uh, the, uh, uh, the amendment. Yeah, if you if you if you're a Tommy Lee Jones fan, you're going to love this because he's, uh, terrific, he's yeah. you know, as I say in my review, he's kind of brought the idea of the cantankerous. Sarcastic old man to to an art form, you know. Yeah, and and also in, in saying that there are also some scenes that he has where he really shows another side of Tommy Lee Jones, which I also mentioned yeah. that that uh, he also shows to, to be yeah. a character, you right. know, principle right. um, yeah. and, and and depth, you know. It's also worth mentioning both, obviously worth mentioning both um, Spielberg and Tony Kushner who wrote the script. Mm -hmm. uh, the book that it is based on, uh, in part. Team of Rivals was a, a book covering the entire presidency of uh, Abraham Lincoln. This movie just focuses mainly on that one month in January of 1865. Right. When they're trying to get the 13th Amendment. The 13th Amendment yes. through. And it's a smart choice because you'd have to make a mini series to make a, a movie about his entire presidency. So it, it also allows it to be a more intimate movie and less of a big epic scale, gone with the wind type thing. Right, right. right. So. I do. I have to caution, though, that people that aren't interested in following the political nuances uh, of an issue may have problems. Yeah, I mean, I disagree just a little bit in that okay. I think Spielberg makes it applicable to people who may not be someone who's wonkish about politics and things like that. So you that. think he gives access to I think it takes a while to get there. I think, okay. the, I think the beginning of the film may seem a little wonkish for the average person who doesn't follow politics, who doesn't follow history. But then once it gets going, once you understand the issues at hand, mm -hmm. I think he really does make it enjoyable for just about anybody. I mean, what, let's face it, we know the outcome. We know that you know the amendment does get passed. Right, I right. was on the edge of my seat leading up to the vote. Uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. I have to say there were certain elements in here that I did not know. You know, historically, that yeah. I thought was really interesting. Yeah. I did not know, for example, maybe don't, don't give too much away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that there was like there was actually an envoy from the south. Oh, right. Was, yeah. Yeah. That's you right. know, that was trying to work out a peace deal and. And, uh, and on that and, note, uh, you know, getting back to Spielberg. Um, he does two things at the end of the movie that I thought were just brilliant and really just show why he is one of the best directors out there. We'll take, again, would not give me too much away, the assassination. Okay. We all know. We know President what's happening. Assassination. Right. But the way Spielberg covers it in this film from a different perspective, again, I don't want to give too much away, um, I thought was brilliant and also thought very touching and very much in line with the relationship in the movie between Lincoln and one of his children. Mm -hmm. uh, I just thought that was brilliant the way he chose to cover because, you know, the Lincoln assassination has been covered in movies before. And the expectation and from audiences right. was, oh, okay, they're gonna, now they're going to do the assassination scene right. and you don't quite so, get yeah, what yeah, you're expecting. And, and it works. Yeah, it works yeah, brilliantly. Yeah. Uh, also, the other thing that him and Tony Kushner do that I really love is the way they choose and when they choose in the film to reveal certain information about certain main characters that speak to motivation and things like that. Right, so, yeah, right. Again, I don't want to give too much away. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah. Speaking, we'll just generalize and say that that is Stevens' history and things like that. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so, yeah, that was kind of, a, that was sort of a surprise, like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it speaks right. to motivation and things like that, but we'll let you see the movie and decide for yourself. Right, right. So I guess um, I would say a big thumbs up for me, or 
as I, I, I wrote on Facebook, uh, four um, stove uh, pipe top hats for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would agree. I mean, this is definitely a movie with uh, with a lot of power, but um, the reasons for it may not be because of the the, the uh, historical significance of it, but more for almost for me, more for the performances. I yeah. think. Um, just there's just so much wonderful acting going on in this thing. Um, I would also credit Spielberg, uh, something we haven't really talked about, but I thought he did an excellent job of just with the lighting of making this thing look like yeah, we right. were living in that time period. Yeah, it was, I get, you know, it was either natural light right. or it was, you know, it appeared to be like gas lighting right, or whatever. Right. You know, it, and it wasn't, again, it wasn't the big sweeping vistas we've come to know from Spielberg when he, he makes these historical dramas. Again, it was more intimate. Uh -huh. um, yeah. And yet, and yet, the cinematography was still, you know, uh, beautiful. Right. To watch, yeah. You know, yeah. So. Yeah. So it's a Spielberg trademark. Yes. So. so yeah. All right. So. Uh, all right. Yeah. Be sure to check out our full reviews on DelcoNewsNetwork.com. <laughs>